Right, hello there everyone, welcome back to James Redman TV and welcome to another Redman Roundup. Guys, this is probably going to be, at least for me, like the most interesting Redman Roundup that I've done for a long, long time. Now, I can take any news with a huge pinch of salt, besides if it comes from a select few reporters. If James Pierce comes out, Paul Joyce comes out, I am more than happy to discuss on the news based on their track records. I'm also happy to discuss on things that Jürgen Klopp says throughout a press conference, purely on the premise that I'm seeing him say the words, opposed to it being written up in an interview. And this press conference that he's just had was the most intriguing one by far. Now, I will get into detail, but everyone's here for the big news, so I don't want to be that host who makes you wait and drag it out till the end. Um, Paul Joyce has confirmed that Liverpool have got definitive interest in both Mateus Nunes and Jude Bellingham. Now, there's plenty of questions that can be asked here that, OK, it, James, does that mean it's confirmed? No, it doesn't. But in terms of the actual interest, at least it legitimises it even more. But let me go back to the old analogy of the dominoes. Listen, you could want a six-pack. I want a six-pack. You want a six-pack. But I love a dominoes. And if my love for a dominoes outweighs my want for a six-pack, I don't really want a six-pack, do I? Because I'm still eating dominoes. So even though I want one, I don't actually want a six-pack because I'm not willing to do what is necessary. The same exact way FSG have shown time and time again. They want, for instance, Kylian Mbappe. But they can't go out and spend that extra 100 million that you need for them. I mean, a bit of an out there example, but you get the point. And I feel like with Jude, a same thing could apply. All it takes is for another big team with a more promising project to come out and basically say, right, we'll take you. And then he could go there. But he has shown good signs with like the, the players and he's shown good signs with you know wanting to actually come to the club and he seemed to have built a connection. So we will see how that unfolds. Um, do I think it will happen? I'm gonna. I, I'm. I'm still gonna lean a little bit more towards yes, uh, but I need to see more updates over the days to really like get on the Jude Bellingham choo choo train. And then Mateus Nunes. Now bear in mind we could have got Mateus Nunes for much less than what we're talking about getting him for now in the summer. But let's not focus on past mistakes. We need midfielders now. I like Mateus Nunes. I think he'd be a sound option. I wish we got him before. Again, another example of FSG being late. You know, Diaz they were late. Gakpo they were late. You know, waiting for all these players in January, even like back in the COVID season, when we got both Kabach and Ben Davies in January, we could have just got a decent centre-back in the summer, but it was it was what it was. And now you fast forward to this instance, and it's a similar situation again. But again, better late than never is the most important thing. So Paul Joyce says it, take it with a little bit more credibility, and let's see where it goes. Now let's get on to the bit that I want to talk about most, the things that are actually factual right now. Jürgen Klopp, my German manager. It, uh, one thing that we all need to embrace as humans is that no one's perfect, no manager's perfect, no player's perfect, unless you're Lionel Messi and Sadio Mane. Um, and also, no, no person's perfect in general. Me, I'm certainly not. And um, it's something that eats at me all the time, but I, I notice mistakes that I make, even if it's a little bit later down the line, and I hold myself accountable. And to see Jürgen Klopp doing a very similar thing, for those who don't know, he was asked about certain players and his loyalty towards players. And he said, I feel like I'm loyal, but I'm not too loyal. And I feel like a lot of Liverpool fans would disagree with that. I think Klopp's shown excessive loyalty to certain players. And even though that's the case, it's nice to hear him in a press conference come out and say, maybe certain players just aren't what they used to be. And the reason why that actually puts a smile on my face is because it, the first step to acceptance is truth and identifying the truth. And if you've been watching Liverpool week in, week out, if you're a true, avid Liverpool fan who loves this team and you've watched it for years... You know these players aren't playing how they usually do. You know these players are underachieving. And that and, and for it and it's not just two or three weeks. This has been for a lot of these players a good few months. And I'll even bring up someone like Mo Salah, best part of a year. For Jürgen Klopp to come out and say that this is the thing, this is the issue that some players might be over the hill. Not that word for word, but something along those lines. That is perfect. It's exactly what I want to hear. Honesty is what's going to get us out of this shithole. And anyone who said that Jürgen Klopp is the problem, listen, even if he identifies the problem a little bit too late, just remember the lack of resources. Just remember the lack of assistance from the boards at the top who won't give him his players. 
And then also remember that he's done this before. He made Mines great. He made Dortmund great. And even though he did do shit in those seventh seasons and he's doing shit in our seventh season, what happens after the seventh season? Because we don't know that, do we? And it'd be a big, big shame to let such a world-class manager go out into the world to where he could go to Germany or Bayern Munich, another team that can pick him up as a threat. And then have to replace him with someone better. And I always go back to what the Dortmund CEO said in 2019. The same Dortmund CEO who appointed Thomas Tuchel, who's a great manager. But he's not Jürgen Klopp. And what the Dortmund CEO said was, it's much easier to replace a man... It's much easier to replace a world-class player opposed to a world-class manager. And, I, I, you know, guys, like, I know that you see me get hyped on these videos sometimes. And I understand that style is not for everyone. And you probably like me to just sit here and be calm. And, but when I talk about this, it gives me energy. Because the only person I need to hear say these things is Jürgen Klopp. And if he shows the same energy through his actions to what he's been using in his words today, expect to see big changes at Liverpool Football Club in the short term, which is what's very much needed. I think he's looked <clears throat> at the prospect of no Oxlade, Cater, Milner next season. He knows reinforcements are needed. This is why I think there's more of an emphasis on Nunes and Bellingham and why Paul Joyce has came out about those two players. And that's the start. That's where we need to go. And although people might not like the idea of the Tyler Mortons of this world getting a chance and stuff like this, Tyler Morton will put in way more of a shift than what Fabinho would have this season. I've watched Tyler Morton a few times at Blackburn. Believe me, we would have got way more points. Not way more. A couple more points with him in the team. Opposed to Fabinho. Let me tell you why. Because he aims to break the play. He aims to read the game. Fabinho isn't even trying to do these things. You can see it when he's playing. And it's the same with a lot of other players. What did Ilkay Gundogan say for Man City last week? A few of the players might just not have the same hunger. These are great players. These are players who have just won multiple Premier Leagues. And what's the point I've been saying? There's no incentive for a lot of these footballers. Now let's go and get a bunch of footballers who are hungry motherfuckers. And let's say we get Jude. What a signing because he's not chosen us based on, like, money. Because we don't... We, it, and when we say we don't have money, we don't have money into the Real Madrid, who are the only other team who can buy Jude. We don't have money in comparison to PSG, who are the only other team who can buy Jude, along with four or five, who can offer them more wages than us. I just want you, Bellingham, on the premise that I, if he joins us, he's joined us because he wants the project, he wants the club, he knows that it's it's because what he'll go and achieve at Man City is 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 he might win more trophies, but it's never going to be comparable to the love that he will receive from our fans. And I think he wants those moments. I think he knows life is about moments. It's about the atmosphere. It's about the big nights under the lights and. That's why if we today, I'm not going to lie, guys, this is the most excited I've been in quite a while, only because this is the ball starting to change. So does this mean that we're going to go into our next game and win? No, we're probably still going to play shit because we can't just go and dive into the under-21s and just get all them playing in the first team. We've still got to persist with the underperformers to some degree. Until Jota comes back, Diaz comes back, until we get new midfielders, we're going to have to persist with the Hendersons and the Fabinho's and the... Van Dykes and the Sellers and the performances that they're putting in. But change is around the corner. That's a light for me. And, and 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 to anyone who doesn't like this, to anyone who doesn't like the sounds of certain big names being dropped or getting let go, which Klopp hasn't said word for word, but he knows. He's a footballer, man. He's smart. He knows some of these players are done. And that's just the way it is. And we will forever love these players. I hope the club gives them permanent lifetime Tickets and what, in fact, not tickets, fucking hell. I can, can barely get a ticket for myself, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but whatever, you get the point. Like, treat them well. Treat them for what they are. Treat them as kings. Now, time to go. Um, shout out to the Arsenal fan TV. It's time to go, blads. It's time to go. I didn't want to use it, but it is for some of these players. And again, honesty is the best policy. And that's why I think us taking the honest approach opposed to the emotional, oh, let's keep Firmino for 10 years. Let's keep Salah for 20 seasons. The Egyptian kid. Fuck you off. Swear this bullshit. It's like Jürgen. And I hope that these words don't just mean nothing. I hope to see change. I hope to see action. Even in the short term, give me Fabio Carvalho. Stop giving me Oxley chamberlain Stop giving me starts from Mohamed Salah. But I understand all those changes won't be made 
as long as I see the changes within the next 6 to 12 months, that's all I care about. And yes, I am willing to be that patient with a manager who has lacked resources to this point. But we'll see how it goes. Anyway, guys, that was a long boss Redmond round of energy, energy, energy. Oh, lads, I've missed doing, like, happy shows and shit. You see what happens when Liverpool play well? You get happy James and we're playing sick. I, I can be a little bit shameless. And let's just get new owners with loads of money as well. And then we're just a great football team again. Anyway, guys, please smash your like button only if you enjoyed um, smash a dislike if you didn't like the video. I'm honestly, like, really pleased. Let me know in the comments down below why you didn't like the video. And uh, much love to you and your mothers. I'll see you all in a bit.